actually, first, like, oh. one second, one second. Because Molly wore this shirt on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> this shirt. I don't know if you can, you know. All right. What's going on here? It's fine. Oh, boy. There's the Duke. I see. I can spot the Duke blue from a mile away. All right. You know, Game on. All right. Game on, girlfriend. Game time, girl. <laughs> What's up, guys? Amanda Smith here with Molly Sullivan. Uh, you might work for the Eagles, but I decided you were a saint. <laughs> <laughs> Debatable. We had some technical difficulties, but we figured it out. Everything's okay now, and hey. I appreciate you. So you tweeted at me over the weekend that you're having fam breakfast before Sunday's game, and you're talking about the differences in the NBA and NFL as a reporter, an athlete, and uh, then a fan. Yeah. So let's all just pretend we're at Molly's breakfast table for a minute. What were you guys talking about? Well, first and foremost, we've got my kid to my right, and she likes French fries, ice cream, and pizza. And so that's what she's having for breakfast. So perhaps we, too, are indulging in that. Absolutely. But, yeah, like you said, Amanda, I mean, we, we had kind of corresponded about this. And when we spoke about this at breakfast with my family, I was like, oh, my gosh, this is perfect for Amanda's web series. Sporting News yeah. came out with an article so we'll give them the assist uh, a few days ago. And it really outlined the difference between – Anna girl, you got a nice form there. It outlined the, the, the differences between the two leagues. And obviously my background um, – I started in college football back in the day, cut my teeth doing that. But my background really is in the NBA. And so, you know, immediately you find yourself from a human aspect when I walked in there the first day of training camp and kind of, you know, figuring out – the differences, you know, and, and this is different. This is a new challenge. Okay, this is something I'm going to need to, um, you know, hone up on. I think first and foremost, obviously, the amount of players. I mean, that's the obvious one. You walk into the locker room with, with 90 guys on that first day of training camp, and you kind of get everything in check and divide and conquer in terms of what I need for my storylines or whatnot. But also just that, you know, obviously we're in week three here. Every play is so critical. And I think if you talk to Brett Brown or you talk to some of your guys that you've covered, your coaches, um, they might tell you that every play in the NBA and college hoops, too, is critical. And that's a, the beautiful thing of, of, you know, not skipping steps and, and, and good days add up. Right. But in the NFL, legit, like every play is critical um, and, and you need that to be successful. Maybe, too, the fact of um, personalities are different. And perhaps social media helps shape that a little bit, the different policies and such. Joel Embiid might have a, a, t a tough time, um, you know, throwing some passes and being a receiver uh, in the NFL because he likes to tweet up a storm. But I think, and obviously, it's, it's much more of a team sport, I think, in the NFL. I'm finding that. You know, obviously, you need a, you need a stud quarterback, right? But if you don't have 10 guys around you that can make the plays and, and build out from there, it's a passing league now. Um, we've got Carson Wentz starting in week three here. So I know, y'all up here breaking the internet this morning. I know, I know. You need the full team. So those are just some of the things. I don't know. I find it a fascinating conversation. Just yeah. getting my, my, my first love is the NBA, and, and now I've really been embraced by, by the world champs. So I don't know. It's just a cool little thing to, to bounce around. Yeah. Would you say that? You know, when you say it's more of a team sport, it's more of a team sport than the NBA or just than you expected? Uh, both. Both. And, you know, it, I don't know. I, I just think in the NBA, and certainly I've covered some good teams and some, some not so good teams, if you want to put it that way. But I did cover last season um, with the 76ers. You know, they ended the regular season on the longest win streak in NBA history with that 16-game win streak. So I've seen the good, bad, ugly, and everything in between. And I think that um, at times, perhaps, the human side of things come up, whether it's these guys are so darn young that they don't know what they don't know, and perhaps egos get involved. Uh, in the NFL, there's no time for that. You know, there is no time for, for egos or, or, or whatnot. So I don't know. It'll be something perhaps we, we talk again on, uh, on week 10 and see how things have evolved. But right now, that's, that's my first impression. We talked before that you said, you know, Philadelphia Eagles fans are different than 76ers fans. I, I mean, they're the same people. Think about that. They're the same people, but just different expectations. When I walked into the NovaCare complex on day one, which is their practice facility for the Eagles, I was just overwhelmed and, and, and super, not overwhelmed, but maybe a little bit. I mean, it just en encompassed by all of the energy 
And, um, you know, they are the world champs and the Sixers aspire to get back to that point. And so not that it's any smoke and mirrors across the street, but the Eagles, they're already at the top. And so now the expectations change and they embrace the target and no longer are they at the underdogs, right? Hungry dogs run faster. It's just cool. And, and, and that's as a reporter, you don't necessarily root for teams. You root for the players, right? And, and, um, there's some incredibly cool storylines going on behind the scenes with the Eagles. Yeah. You know, I saw on Twitter today that after Carson Wentz, you know, announced that he's coming back, his next tweet was about Nick Foles, mm -hmm. um, and acknowledging him for all he's done. What do you think that that says about? the closeness of this group and the bigger picture that they have in mind. Well, it is a fascinating quarterback room, and I can tell you there's no egos. The egos have been checked at the door, and that's why it's worked. And Mike Rowe, uh, the offensive coordinator, was, was the first guy, I, as coaching member, that I met at the Novacare Complex. And, um, you know, it's, it's just it's, it's refreshing to see because um, they owe a lot to Nick Foles, obviously. And so here comes Carson Wentz, and they he is their guy. Um, Doug Peterson said that from day one, the day they drafted him. They knew it. When he's ready to go, he's going to go. And, you know, no restrictions, no need to hold back here in week three. Everybody knows their roles, and everybody knows that they, they need each other, and it's that accountability factor. It's, it's playing for the guy right next to you. And um, that through the Sixer years, when they when they weren't winning, that really was at the core of everything that they did. And Brett Brown was building that culture that the Eagles have right now. And it's it's really just doing things the right way, and 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 you know putting out honest days work and knowing that they will add up. For the Sixers, they did last year. It's not quite at the point they want to be, and they're going to have to get past Boston to get to that point this season. Which I don't know. It's going to be pretty darn tough to do, but. The Eagles, look, we um, so far so good. With the Sixers, what do you think is missing that they just can't get to the next level of where they need to be? Well, Brett Brown was, was very clear that he wanted to go star hunting uh, this past offseason. But I think what a lot of people forgot was the second part of that sentence. He said, I want to go star hunting or star developing. They've already got the talent here in Philadelphia, and as evidence uh, by what we've seen across in Camden at the practice facility this off season, a lot of guys checking in to do work. Maybe a, a couple of photo shoots in between <laughs> doing work, uh, but but they're certainly putting up the work and and their form, their mechanics, their body. They pass the eye test. Perhaps they're just missing that superstar, but they've got a lot of talent already, and so it's just cultivating that. Um, it's taking that next step forward, whatever that may be individually. You know, we talked to you before though that as a reporter, you're in this role. Who is it? That's Aubrey. We love Aubrey. Hey, Aubrey. <laughs> you're in this role um, where you're working with the 76ers, and then unexpectedly you move into transitioning in your first year in the NFL. What have you been able to learn uh, just in your career that's put you in a position where you're easily able to adjust? I don't know if it's easy, <laughs> right? Um, you know, I think it's the stuff champions are made of. And to be a little cliche, you don't know how strong you are until you're in the moment. And if you would have asked me a couple months ago if how I would react to having my contract not renewed, I'd probably say devastated and that um, I love my job, you know, and that I, I couldn't imagine that. But life has a funny way of, of moving you forward. And, and, you know, and, and that's really where I think I am now. I don't know if, if I had the choice, if I would ever leave the 76ers, I would maybe retire with them uh, mm -hmm. from a broadcasting standpoint because I love my job so much. And it's a love for the league. It's a love for the game. Um, it's a respect level for the players and the coaches. And I, and I, um, I don't know if I would have ever left. So here I am now. And so the transition, I don't know if it's been easy, but um, you take it day by day, and, and I've got a two-year-old daughter, and, and really that helps put everything in check. I'll go back to Philadelphia sports fans. We talked about, you know, the, the differences between the yeah. NBA and NFL there. And, um, you know, I will say that they are the best sports fans in the world in terms of they are incredibly savvy, intelligent. They know their teams. They're loyal. And to have the respect and the trust of, of them, that's really who I work for. Yeah. Um, the people on the other side of the TV. And so to have their respect for this process, that's, I guess, what you never want to define the silver lining, but that's what has been so incredibly humbling through this process 
and, and where I am today. I'm just um, I'm grateful to do what I love and to do it with good people. And you do a great job. Well, thank you. Back at you. Of course. I watched that with you. I know. I already noticed you got your red in the face the last time. But you, you did. Incredible job. You can't fake this stuff. Your halftime reports, you listen, you follow up. The players, you know, looking you right in the eye and, and, and they're answering your questions. And so you're well on your way, girlfriend. <laughs> Holly, you're making it happen again. <laughs> I got to give you a little insight here. She didn't know that I had this on. And so you are a real deal Duke fan because you had that handy. You had that right, right over there. It off. It's not, you know, deep in your closet. Okay. Real recognize real. I respect that. Thank you. I respect you too. This is a fun rivalry. It's good. They all are. <laughs> hey, Molly. You already sort of answered this question, but I need one word okay. instead of, you know, you got to narrow it down to just right. one. I'm not, I'm not good at this. You are going to be great. It's fine. That's why I'm asking the questions, though, because I'm not good at this either. Okay. Eagles fans are? Loyal. Doug Peterson is? Fearless. Eagles final record this season? <sighs> 12 and 4. I think 10 wins. Gets them a wild card. Perhaps wins the division. They're going to end the season in Atlanta, but 12 and 4. Best touchdown celebration you've seen can be any team. I still like Isabella. <laughs> All right. Isabella with the fast feet. Right. He's got fancy footwork. Well, we're going with my kid. Carson Wentz is back now. MVP prediction. I don't even want to, I don't even want to think that way. I feel like, I feel like it's, it's one game at a time. It's one play at a time. I got Doug Peterson on line one. Um, I'm going, I'm going number 11 though. I'm going with Carson. If Philadelphia. Wins another Super Bowl. Molly, will you burn your car? Oh, no. And, 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 and the Eagles fans will not either. And they were so calm, cool, and collected. You think they're going to keep like in the grocery store? Everything's free. They, they will act like they've been there before. And it will be a beautiful celebration. It really was. I mean, look, the, the celebration went on right outside of my, uh, where we were living, uh, my, doorway and my kids slept through it all and so I I I would like to debate anyone that says that Philadelphia sports fans are anything but refined because I'm more impressed that your kids slept through all of I that know. to be honest same same game you're most looking forward to this season uh my next one which is Sunday uh we've got the Colts I I always just look forward to the next one toughest win for the Eagles to get this year is going to be against Colts going with the next one. I am so boring. I think I think this weekend will be difficult, you know, because it's it's we've got Carson back in the mix and we'll see how things sync up and gel and, and go from there. In 76ers history, who's got that best nickname? God, I know who you are going to say. You're going to say the answer. You're going to say Iverson. I'm, a question? I'm going with my man, Julius Irving, just because he's so classy and he does so much for the community. I just came... Uh, we, we attended his, his charity event last week, and I don't know. He was my first uh, big interview for my last job, and I just think he's he's so cool. Do you have a nickname? Because I saw someone on Twitter call you Sully. Well, I like – Fun. Well, Sully works. Sully works. I've been called far worse. I will go with Sully. <laughs> I want a nickname. No, Like, what do you make with Amanda Smith? Just hey, let me work. Hundred thousand of us on Facebook. <laughs> I'm gonna work on your nickname. Okay, great. You let me know. Keep me updated. Give me a call. This season, where do the Sixers finish in the East? Me. Wow. Tough to get past Boston. I think Boston's the favorites. I'm not saying anything anybody doesn't know. Um, Toronto will be interesting dynamic. You know, they're gonna try and campaign to keep Kawhi there. And Pacers were big time um, a surprising factor last season. Don't ever count out Spo in Miami and what they're able to do, the consistency. I don't know. I, I top three, top three, which is a good thing. Um, mm -hmm. but it's going to be tough to get past those C's. Go to game day food. Still a Luna bar? Yes. Luna bar is my go to. Um, Starbucks. You should take Starbucks. after your daughter and go with ice cream. He's, I mean, really, that's every other, you know. <laughs> outside of it. Um, I'm a big coffee drinker, though, but I think Luna Bar and Swedish Fish. Most memorable game you've covered? I think 
and I'll, uh, Mark Helfoltz when he returned um, after a long game absence. And I think just seeing him um, from the mental side, the physical side, and seeing the work that he put in behind the scenes, not only himself, but with guys like Billy Lane, um, who really is assistant coach, uh, really helped him behind the scenes, and the medical staff. Um, I don't know. It was rewarding to, to see that because – um, then you had Joel and Beat standing next to him in the post game interview, and you know, and rather than talking about the the performance that he had, he went straight to his buddy Markel. What would you say is your favorite part of your job? Favorite part of my job doing doing stuff like this, you know. Um, I think it's important. I didn't really have uh, anyone to to really walk me through the process of this business, female or male. So far. Most memorable interview you've done? You know, instantly I go straight to like a Joel B just because I think he was just built for Philadelphia and he knows the city and he's so aware of things. Um, and he's, he's super self-aware as well. JJ Reddick is, is a real, um, he's smart. He's, yeah. What was that? Hey. Yes, yes, I know. He's incredibly smart, and so he challenges you as a reporter because you want to up your game to Mm -hmm. to stay on his level. Um, So I don't know. I I think every athlete has has something cool um, to it, you know, and and the Eagles as well. You know, I'm really looking forward to to this season and and getting to know these guys and, and bringing out their stories as well. All right, who would be your dream interview? Mike, as in... (laughs) <laughs> Michael Jordan. Uh, I just think, you know, I've, I've met him a couple times, but to be able to sit down with him and just have a conversation, I mean, that, that'd be pretty cool. Are you going to ask him what he thinks about uh, Space Jam 2? <laughs> Absolutely. Kristen <laughs> Lowe, I, I know, would, would want to uh, <laughs> know that, our girl. That was so- my at sign. <laughs> Well, I have uh, your favorite team to root for, but we already know what that is. <laughs> Thanks for the shirt once again. Okay, we see you on TV. What's something we wouldn't know about you? I am a little borderline OCD. After the birth of my daughter, I think a lot of those tendencies get thrown out the window. Yep. Things like germaphobe or counting things or whatever, organizing. And when I was a swimmer, I swam at UNC. Uh, and, you know, I kind of thought that I was just superstitious that, you know, that kind of a realm. I don't know. Maybe that I, was, I used to be a borderline OCD a little bit. I think it's awesome that you feel comfortable enough to talk about that. I talk about mental illness myself a lot. I had an eating disorder for many years. Um, And so kind of how we're talking about empowering each other, I think it's about being able to take your own experiences and and help other people with it. Absolutely. The journey. It's much healthier when you, you know, don't hold back. This year, I hope that I. I hope that I, 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 hmm, that's so tough. Oh, man. It's like the Little Mermaid, like, on the rock here. Um, this year, I hope that I, um, I don't know. That's so difficult. I want to know, this year, I hope that I. I hope that I just have faith and continue to have faith in the journey and enjoy it. Sometimes I think we get too caught up on where we want to be instead of where we are, and there's beauty and grace in every day. Look at you. Perfection. I love it. That part is speaking from the heart. Yeah, I know, and and really, that's that's a beautiful thing about me not knowing what I was going to say because that was just perfection. I'm going to think about mine, but I, I love what you had to say. It's really cool. Thanks. Thanks, and it's fine because we'll see you again, like I said. It's all coming back in week ten. I'll keep my note cards. Oh, this one says, would you come on my show again? But that one's already out the book, too. We decided it. I do want to get to some of the fan questions. Mm -hmm. Uh, So some of the questions that you guys had for Molly. So Mr. Jacob underscore Michael here didn't know that the Eagles were going to announce Carson Wentz coming back. So he said, what week do you think he'll be back? I'm going to help him out and say, how do you think he looks coming into this game against the Colts? You know, it'll be interesting mobility-wise. If he's got his legs under him, that's always going to be the number one question. Um, judging by what we've seen in practice, I think he's ready. And there was no rush, and rightfully so. 
Um, but again, there's, there's no restrictions and that's kind of exciting too. They're going to continue to play smart and have those conversations so that they, they, you know, don't go out of bounds there. But, um, I think that, I think he's ready. There was no rush. And that's the beautiful thing of having, uh, Nick Foles under center as well. There was some talk about Alshon Jeffrey coming back for this game in week three, okay. too. Jambus94 wants to know, when do you think we'll see him on the field? Yeah, and, you know, I will I will say this. Okay. I got to know AJ uh, being with the Sixers because he was often, once the season ended, he was at some of the games uh, with his friends and family, and I'm a big fan, to be fair. And I just think that he goes about things with such a professional uh, manner, and to see him really attack this rehab in the same way and to see that now in the trenches on that side um, is cool to see. I, I don't know if he's going to be back week three. Doug Peterson said this morning that it's, it's week to week, which tells me um, maybe not week three. I say week four. But, hey, anything can happen, and if, and if anybody can get back on the field, it would be A.J. for sure. Okay, fantasy footballers, take note. <laughs> Sam Robert Wank wants to know, do you think any future bowl victory could be as sweet as the first? Absolutely. Everything is sweet, um, and I think that they can do it. Stack them up. Stack them up. 13 years you've been working in television. Everybody needs some advice. I will say this. I used to lie about my age. I'm so proud about my age now. I think when I became a mom, I started to be like, all right. But you know what I'm saying? Like, I would lie about my age. You didn't ask this, but side note, I would lie about my age so much. My family will back me up on this. I had no clue how old I was because I would lie. Yeah, but now I, I feel like once you become a mom, you're like, okay, I'm proud. I'm a cool mom. Or You I, are a cool mom. I think I am. You're hip. I try to be. When's your birthday? August 27th. I just oh leveled up. Gosh, I just missed it. Yeah, just leveled up. It's all right. It's okay. Next year. <laughs> Mine's in December, so you're still on time. Jason Ross Jr. would like to know, what do you think is the key to good networking in the industry? The key to good networking. Oh, gosh. Um, talk. Talk, 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 talk as much as you can. And I think listen is even more important. It's one thing. Um, again, I go back to, you know, you go to get people, men and women who have been in this industry for years and perhaps, um, I don't know. I, I stopped myself from saying something there and we'll retract. But I think just, just more so than talking is listening. Just listen and absorb as much as you can. And, um, yeah, that's really the, the go-to. What did you retract? I ended up on the next episode. This is how you get viewers. <laughs> Thank you for doing this with me. Yeah. Well, I think for, I just think it's really cool that you're doing this. And I know I expressed it to you before, but it's really cool because, um, part of why I enjoyed my, my, my former job in the NBA was that Sideline reporters, many of us were extremely close, you know, and at every NBA city, you, you would swap war stories and um, you become a better not only reporter, but person. And um, so for you to be doing this and to have a resource and an and outlet where people can come and 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 do that is, is really neat. So keep it up. And I'm in your corner. Go. All right, guys, for your girl, Amanda Smith and your girl, Molly Sullivan. Thanks for hanging out with us.